Are you visiting Milan for a day or two and want to know what to see and do? Well, stay tuned because today we're going to show you all you need to know about spending two days in Milan. And stay tuned till the end because we have a bonus tip of something that is not very common to see, but very cool. Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's go. All right, so we have arrived at the Milano Centrale train station. This station is massive. It's really, really big and it's kind of beautiful. Inside you can find store, restaurants, everything you need for your trip. And actually it's an attraction on its own. It's really big and it's worth visiting. It's actually very true. So if you happen to have like an hour or two before your train, this station is actually one that, you know, you could spend a few hours and, uh, and take know, a look. Yeah, you could definitely take a look around. And here, out right outside the train station, you can find two lines of the subway from Milan, the yellow line and the green line. And you find the taxi stand just outside. Also from the train station, you can take the Malpensa Express and it takes you straight to the airport, Malpensa airport, very quickly, every hour. Right, so we have arrived at the Piazzale Loreto, which is at the end of course of Buenos Aires. Which is also the shopping area. I know, we will do an entire section of the video about course of Buenos Aires so, later on. So stay tuned for that. Now we're going to take the subway and go to downtown and we'll show you how to use the subway in Milan. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna buy, I want to buy the ticket for three days, three zones, so we can use the, the subway all the time we want. One thing you can do, you can want to know that um, you can actually tap your phone at the at the subway to get in and get out. But that's every time you tap it, you're going to be charged once. So remember, if you only do one or two trips a day, you can tap it. Otherwise, just buy the ticket. Now, we just got to remember to keep our tickets for the My entire stay. And here we are, and now we're going to the Duomo, up here. All right, so here we are at the Duomo. We have arrived. This is the heart of Milan, the center of the city. And the beautiful cathedral behind me is the famous Duomo, one of the most famous cathedrals in Italy. It was started to be built in 1386 and it took more than 500 years to finish. Can you it's believe massive. It? Incredible. I also heard that how many thousands of people can get inside there? Oh, a lot of people. And it's very, very big. And one of the best things to do at the Duomo in Milan is going all the way to the top. Because from the top, you have an amazing view of the city. Well, I think we should do that. And we will. All right. Right, so we are here now on top of the roof. How beautiful is it up I here? I know, it's stunning up here. You can see the whole city from the top. It's quite, a, quite remarkable. Absolutely. Now, one thing that we didn't, that you, we, couldn't show you is the fact that they're very concerned about whether or not we have our tickets in advance. Uh, by the way, we left a link in the description below for you to be able to buy your tickets in advance. And also they're concerned about not bringing drones or any other things that could be considered a security risk. Actually, they even searched our backpack. So keep in mind that they go through a little metal detector and search. Absolutely. But hey, it is absolutely well worth it to come up here and see, you know, the beautiful Milanese landscape, I have to say. And this intricate work, stonework, is like spectacular. Well, okay, so we made it to the All top. The I way. tell you, it was a little freaky deaky coming up here. But the view from here is stupendous. And over there, you can see the little, the statue of the Virgin Mary, which is on the top of the Duomo, that the, the people from Milan call it La Madunina, or the little Virgin Mary, which is all gilded. Yes, yeah, really beautiful. All right, folks, pro tip. If you do decide 
to do this excursion. There's a couple things you need to know. So first thing is going to take you about an hour from start to finish, right? So maybe go right before lunch or something like that because then you can, you know, have lunch. Secondly, if you have any mobility issues, one thing that they don't really tell you is that they're going to take you up by elevator, but coming down, you're sort of directed to the stairs. So you go all the way down by stairs. Now, one thing you may want to let the elevator guy know, if you have mobility issues, see if they'll let you pick the elevator Exactly. So this statue is pretty famous. It's a saint that, according to legend, was skinned alive. And as you can see here, the saint is completely skinned and is wearing his skin around his neck and his shoulder as it was a, a, a drape. And you can see it anatomically correct all the muscle underneath the skin. Wow, this church is absolutely gigantic. Yeah, it's pretty massive and really beautiful. So, as you know, this is the biggest church in Italy. Really? Not, not the Vatican? No, because the Vatican is not in Italy, as you know from our video about the Vatican. Ah. The Vatican is in Vatican City, ah, right. which is an independent state. Cool. Now, we were just on our way out of the Duomo and we found out that our ticket also gives us access to the underground of the uh, of the Duomo. This is the archaeological site. Here. So, like everything else in Italy, is buildings are built on top of buildings that were pre-existing since the Roman time and even before the Roman times. So they discovered this whole area while well, they were doing the digging for the subway here in Milan. And it's incredibly ancient and there's like Roman columns and old churches that dated very, way, way back then before the Duomo. They even have frescoes that you can see, which and, is really incredible. Yeah, and mosaic on the floor. So definitely buy the ticket and get to see this area as well. It's totally worth it. Absolutely. And not very busy. No, nobody's here because nobody knows about it. You guys know about it because you're watching our channel. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, now is a great time to do that. And give us a like. Yes, of course. All right, so right next to the Duomo, we have Italy's oldest shopping center. Yes, La Rinascente, the most famous and most prestigious department store in Italy and in Milan. It was built in 1865 and inside is extremely beautiful and with a lot of luxury brands. But the best part of the old play experience is going all the way to the top, where are lots of restaurants and a beautiful view of the Duomo. Here we are in front of La Rinascente. The name of La Rinascente means the Renaissance, the re rebirth, and it was actually given to this place to no, nobody else than Gabriel D'Annunzio, one of the most famous poets in Italy. You're so smart. I know. Let's go inside. All right. All right, so one of the things that you have to know is that if you're eating at a touristy restaurant, which we always say don't do, but we're doing it today, the prices are going to be a little bit higher. But, you know, given the fact that this is a restaurant in one of the oldest uh, shopping centers in Italy, I'm kind of hopeful. I know you're not supposed to have this with lunch, but it's delicious.
And here you are in the Galleria, still next to the Duomo, there's this beautiful Galleria. It was built in the 19th century and has the name of the first king of Italy, Vittorio Emanuele II. Here near Vittorio Emanuele II, the first king of Italy. And in here you can find some of the most luxurious stores like Chanel, Prada, Louis Vuitton. Also some incredible restaurants and coffee shop. And it's just a beautiful place to go for a stroll. And at Christmas time, in the middle of this beautiful Galleria, you'll find an amazing Christmas tree every year. That's true. Now, one of my absolute most favorite things about the Galleria here in Milan is this little pastry shop. It's called uh, Pasticceria Marchese. It's been here forever and they make amazing desserts. They make coffee. And of course, you can also stay there for lunch if you want. Um, you know, the portions are a bit small. They're very expensive. They're very pretty. Um, and you have to make a reservation. You have to make reservations, absolutely. But for me, it's delicious. So let's go. Ch let's go have a coffee. And as you know, Italians are very superstitious, and. In here, in the Galleria, there's a nice superstition that you have to try. And check out this video here if you want to know about, more about this superstition Absolutely. in Milan. Absolutely. At the end of the Galleria, you'll find the Leonardo Museum, or called Il Mondo di Leonardo. In here, you can see all the replicas of the machine that Leonardo did. You might ask, why Leonardo in Milan? Because Leonardo worked a lot in Milan. Actually, most of his achievements were done here when he was hurt, um, when he was at the service of the Duke of Milan. For example, he worked a lot in the Castello we're going to see tomorrow. He worked a lot in some canals here in Milan and he designed the world famous Last Supper here in Milan. And that's why Milan is very attached to Leonardo and his masterpieces. And here we are in Piazza Scala. Behind us is the most famous opera theater in the world. This is La Scala Theatre and it was built in the late 1700s by the Empress Maria Luigia d'Austria. And here are some of the most famous perf opera performers in the world performed, like Arturo Toscanini or Verdi presented some of his operas here. And recent, more recently, Luciano Pavarotti or Placido Domingo performed here. So for every opera singer in the world, performing here at La Scala is the biggest achievement in their career. That's amazing. Now, one of the things that's interesting about La Scala is that every year they host something called La Prima della Scala, mm. and that is usually in around in Christmas time. In, yeah, in the 7th of December. Yeah, but if you want to go there, it's going to completely break your credit card. It's a fortune. But, you know, you might, you know, rub elbows with you two or, or maybe the, the prime minister or president or a king of somewhere. But, you know, if that's something that you'd be interested in checking out. Take a look at La Prima della Scala. Now we're going to go inside and take a look behind the scenes. Here we are about to enter the La Scala Theatre guided tour. I'm going to show us all about this beautiful theatre and uh, we're going to learn something hopefully. And this is the beautiful La Scala Theatre inside. Look how massive it is. And the chandelier is one of the most famous in the world. Look, take a look. Also, this theatre is famous for its acoustic. Apparently, the acoustic is one of the best in the world. That's why it's so important for an opera singer to be able to sing here. I kind of feel a little bit noble in, in, in this room. It's so beautiful. Can you imagine all of the people coming here and mingling in between the, uh, in the, in between the acts? interesting visit at the La Scala Theatre. I have to say it felt quite noble to be in such a building with so much history. Yeah, it's pretty beautiful. So if you come to Milan, you definitely should take a look at this theatre. 
is definitely worth a look. Absolutely. Now, pro tip, we're going to leave a link in the description below where you can meet an English guide who will take you through the theater and tell you all about it. Absolutely. And here next to La Scala Theater, this is the entrance of the Brera district, which is this beautiful district about like nice restaurant and places for aperitivo. Also here, you find the most famous painting museum in Milan, which is called La Brera Gallery or La Pinacoteca di Brera. In here, you can find some of the most amazing paintings of the Renaissance. And it's very, very, very beautiful to see. If you want to book, if you want to go inside, you have to book the ticket in advance and we we'll leave the link in the description below. And in this beautiful palace is the Pinacoteca di Brera, or the painting museum I was telling you about earlier. We didn't really buy the, the ticket to go inside because we don't really are we are not really into aficionados. No, right? it's not our thing. We prefer to see the city and live the city. But if you like uh, Renaissance paintings, this is actually the place to be. Let's go on to our next stop. And this is the area of Brera that is famous for restaurants, coffee shop, and nightlife. If you come here after dark, it's full of people and very alive. And it's definitely a good place to come for an aperitivo or a restaurant. Okay. Next, we're gonna go to the fashion district of Milan and we're gonna take a look. All right, maybe I'm gonna buy myself a polo because it's so hot today. <laughs> and. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Let's walk there. Alrighty. And here we are in front of the Grand Hotel Milan. This hotel is very, very famous because this is where Giuseppe Verdi, the famous composer, died in 1901. Actually, when he was in agony and in the last few days of his life, he was so loved in Milan that the people of Milan put straw on the streets so that the, the noise from the traffic did not bother the dying composer inside the hotel. And if you cross the street, you can start shopping at Armani. Let's go. All right, so that was Armani. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything that was perfect. So now, where are we headed? We're gonna go in Via Montanapoloni, which is over there. And that's the beginning of the fashion history of Milan. Let's go take a look. Very good. And maybe we'll do some damage on that credit card. Now, on your next trip to Milan, one stop you gotta go to is the Cafe Dolce & Gabbana. So you can stop for a coffee right after lunch. All right, so if you happen to want to do a little shopping that's not going to break the bank, then you have to come here to Corso Vittorio Emanuele II. In this street, you'll find a lot of brands that are way more affordable than this previous street. Although there are brands that you can find in your own town, like Urban Outfitter or The Gap. But this is a way of shopping in Milan without breaking the bank. Exactly. So we just got off the train and where are we headed next? We are in Porta Venezia and now we're going to go take a look at another shopping area of Milan where you actually shop without breaking the bank. And here it's a little bit more um, local kind of brands that you can shop around. That's true. Actually, there's one brand that I really like. It's called OVS and uh, it's probably one of the biggest ones that I've seen here in, uh, in Italy. Yeah, it's really good Italian clothes, but very affordable. All right, so let's go. Well, this concludes our first day in Milan. Yes, of our two day in Milan. Now we're gonna go rest a little bit, get a shower and go out for dinner. And Absolutely. tomorrow out exploring again. Sounds good. All right, see you in a bit. 
and good morning. Today is day two on our trip to Milan. Yes, and our two days in Milan, and we're gonna go see more stuff today, starting from the castle. That's right. Now, before we do that, I want to ask you guys a question. Do you notice anything different today than yesterday? The clouds. Remember what we were telling you in our packing for Italy video? In the spring and the fall, it can, the weather can be very unpredictable. And yesterday, it was t-shirts and shorts weather. And today, I really wish I brought a parka. Yeah, today is much colder than yesterday. So be prepared when you travel Italy in the spring and the fall the weather might change really quickly. Exactly. All right, so right now, where are we headed? To the castle. All right, let's go. All right, so we just got off the metro at Castello Station. Oh, wait, Cairoli, Cairoli, I'm sorry, I know. But for me, it's Castello, but it's true. If you want to come to the castle, you have to go to Cairoli Station. On the red line. That's right. And now we're going to go inside this magnificent fortress. This fortress was built by Francesco Sforza, the Duke of Milan, in the 15th century. And that's why the name Castello Sforzesco, from the Sforza family. Inside, it is a free party game visit, which is on the courtyard of the castle. And then if you want to see the museum with all the armory, that's part you have to pay. I think it's a pretty cool thing. Now, if you're not really into castles, enjoy the video, give us a thumbs up. Or if you like this kind of stuff on your next trip to Milan, Come on in and take a look, just like we did. All right, let's, let's go. go. All right, so one of the things that's really important about anything, uh, any, any vis visiting any particular place here in Italy is that you must buy your tickets in advance. Otherwise, you're going to be spending your holiday Waiting in a line. line. Exactly. Like the people behind us. That's right. So always buy your tickets. And that's why we always love to put the skip the line tickets for you guys in the description below. And here we are on the other side of the castle, you can see this beautiful, beautiful park. It's called Parco Sempione. This park was built at the end of the 1800 and it's quite spectacular. And the end of the park over there, you can see an arc. It's called Arco della Pace or Arch of the Peace that was built in 1815 to commemorate the peace re re reached after the Congress of Vienna. And believe it or not, this is another attraction in Milan, the first Starbucks in Italy. It's actually quite spectacular inside and very unique. So let's go take a look. Alrighty, let's go. As you can see, it's quite ornate inside and usually the lines are pretty long if you come here during rush hour. So if you want to have one coffee here, come early. Here we are, we reached another steps in our tour of Milan in two days, and this is Porta Garibaldi, where some of the most modern skyscrapers in Milan are, and one of the most famous ones as well, the vertical forest, which is just right behind us. Here it is, let's go take a look. And here we are in front of the Bosco Verticale, the vertical forest, this super cool building that you have behind me with all these trees that are coming out of the balconies and uh, the building itself. This building was inaugurated in 2014 and was designed by a famous architect, the Studio Boeri, in, here in Milan. Now, remember we were telling you about a little bonus that we had for you here on our two days in Milan itinerary? Yes, here it is. So here behind us, you can recognize some locks designed by nobody else than Leonardo da Vinci. 
Milan was surrounded by canals till very recently, actually. And some of the canals and the lock system was designed by nobody else than Leonardo da Vinci himself. That's incredible. So if you want to find your way here, you can actually go visit the Bosco Verticale building first or later. But go, go there first. You can go take a look at the beautiful modern buildings. And then it's just a two, three minute walk away. You can see these old locks and just kind of feel like you're immersed in history. And if you went through the Panama Canal, you can recognize they're the exact same type of locks. They, are. they were designed 500 years ago by Leonardo da Vinci. Incredible. All right, so where's next? Let's go to see some other area of Milan. All righty. All right. Well, we are in front of Santa Maria delle Grazie, this church that outside looks a bit underwhelming, inside as a, one of the most famous paintings in the world. Yes, it's called The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. You might have remembered this painting from many, many, many photos and right. from the Da Vinci Code where Robert Langdon talks about this painting. Exactly. Now, one of the things that you must do if you want to see this, you must absolutely Book your ticket right now because it's sold out for months and months in advance. Yeah, because there's only very few people allowed inside at the same time yeah. because apparently the painting is deteriorating. So they only allow very few people at the same time. Exactly. So the thing tends to be sold out really quickly. Book it in advance and follow the link in the description below for the, exactly. the line. Exactly. Okay, so let's go inside. So, what did you think of the Last Supper? Unfortunately, we're not allowed to take footage in there, but you could take lots of photos. So we took a ton of photos and we're gonna we, patch them and together. We patch them together, exactly. <laughs> what do you think? Did we do a good job? Give us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. So let's go to our next place for our two days in Milan video. We're gonna go see the area called the Navigli, where the canals are. All right, let's go. And now we've made it to the historic Navigli area. Yeah, the Navigli used to be this beautiful canal. They were all around the city of Milan. They were built in medieval time to bring supply goods to the city of Milan. And these are the only one left. This one and another one you're gonna go see la uh, later. And the actual port of Milan was going there and we're gonna go see later. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit like of Venice, but inside of a metropolitan city. More like an Amsterdam. More like an Amsterdam. And of course, there's lots of places for us to go have a drink. And every month they do an antique market on this area uh, on, this, on a Sunday morning, which apparently is really, really beautiful. So we have to come back and watch it. All right, let's go. Now, if you're into boats, you might actually want to take a nice little boat ride. Looks like not a bad one to go on. So on this boat, um, you can have an aperitivo. Runs the aperitivo is at six thirty and seven forty, and it costs thirty three euro. euros to go on. It's and they give you a drink and some finger food. Yeah, it's a bit pricey, but you know, like, actually, it could be a fun experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is called Vicolo di Lavandai, means Vicolo of the washing people because here people used to do their laundry. In this, uh, they used to kneel here and wash their clothes in this... Uh, in this dirty water? In this dirty water. Hmm, interesting. I'm sure they had a soap or something. Yeah, well, that's to... that was what they used to do before washing machines. Go figure. All right, so we were looking to go and have an aperitivo and what did we find? The world's smallest 
Gin Distillery. Give me a like on this video if you wouldn't mind having a distillery like this one in your basement. <laughs>And here we are at the port of Milan. You would never imagine that Milan being in a city inland has a port, but actually, yes, had a port here. And this was, was one of the most uh, busy ports in the northern Italy. And it was in function until 1979, when the last boat arrived here with supplies for the city. Okay, now it's time to have a glass of wine. After 20,000 steps, I am done. Well, this concludes our two days in Milan. Hopefully we loved it, you liked it, and you learned something about this beautiful, beautiful city and you want to walk to come and visit this city. Exactly. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave us a message in the comments and below. We love to answer to the questions. In the meantime, we'll see you in our next video. Cheers. Cheers.